Fentanyl is a very potent opioid that's been used for anesthesia and pain relief for decades. The non-medical use of fentanyl has increased and decreased at various times since the 1970s. Fentanyl and its analogs have been misrepresented as other opioids, resulting in many deaths due to dosing issues. The positive effects of fentanyl include sedation, pain relief, euphoria, anxiety reduction, and general mood lift. Its negative effects can include respiratory depression, drowsiness, vomiting, nausea, constipation, sweating, and decreased blood pressure. The drug has been used for both acute and chronic pain. Because of the various administration methods that now exist, it is considered a versatile substance. For example, it can be used in a short-acting fashion for anesthesia and breakthrough pain, and it can be used in patch form for long-lasting pain relief. The drug has long been viewed as a useful substance for anesthesia due to its preservation of cardiovascular stability. It also has other useful properties like a short duration and high potency, though there are still issues that can arise in anesthetic settings. It is generally described as more sedating and pain relieving than other opioids, while also being less euphoric. Despite that, it is still sufficiently recreational for many people. Intravenous administration of fentanyl, like what is seen in hospital settings, begins working in under two minutes and will last for 30 to 60 minutes. With a transdermal patch, the onset can be over 12 hours, but it provides effects for three days. Intranasally, the drug works in five to 10 minutes and lasts for one to three hours. Bucally, the drug works in 10 to 15 minutes and lasts for one to three hours. Fentanyl is a phenylpiperidine opioid. It primarily functions through mu opioid receptor agonism, and it also appears to have some serotonergic activity. Since it produces less histamine than other opioids, some of the negative effects are lower. Fentanyl is 75 to 100 times more potent than morphine and 30 to 50 times more potent than heroin. Transdermal administration usually involves patches that contain 2.5 to 10 milligrams of fentanyl, a dose that could be lethal if taken at once. The patches provide 25 to 100 micrograms of the drug per hour, which then builds up in the skin and slowly enters the bloodstream. A light intranasal or buccal dose is 10 to 25 micrograms. A common dose is 25 to 50 micrograms, and a strong dose is 50 to 75 micrograms. Those doses apply to non tolerant users. The amount can increase significantly in those with a tolerance. Paul Janssen of Janssen Pharmaceutica began investigating potent opioids in the 1950s, which led to dextromoramide, an opioid that was more potent than morphine. Janssen then developed fentanyl in 1960. The drug was found to be very potent relative to morphine and to have a higher therapeutic index. For situations where both significant pain relief and sedation were needed, it was determined to be a good option. Fentanyl was introduced in the U.S. in 1968 for intravenous anesthetic applications. There was a need for cardio-stable anesthetics around this time so that operations could be done on people with severe cardiovascular disease. Morphine was tried, but fentanyl was a superior option due to it having few effects on cardiovascular function at high doses. A combo of fentanyl and dropiridol, which was also developed by Janssen Pharmaceutica, was used under the name Innovar in the U.S. and Europe. It was popular for a while, but the practice eventually faded. Non-medical use has gone in and out since the 1970s, with many deaths coming from fentanyl and its derivatives, such as alpha-methyl fentanyl. Some of the earliest recreational use was by medical professionals who had access to the drug. It's been known for decades that fentanyl and its analogs could become an issue at some point due to their high potency. Gary Henderson, a pharmacology professor, noted in 1988 that it would be difficult to combat the trafficking of fentanyl derivatives, like 3-methyl fentanyl. Transdermal delivery was investigated in the 1980s. Durajizik, a transdermal fentanyl product, was approved by the FDA in 1990. Use had essentially been limited to hospital settings and anesthesia, but the availability of a transdermal product would eventually change that. Fentanyl prescriptions rose significantly in the 1990s, and more cases of non-medical use quickly appeared. Millions of patients have used transdermal fentanyl since its introduction. Recreational use gained more attention in the 2000s 
2000s, by which point diversion was relatively common. Reports appeared of people extracting the fentanyl for injection, inhaling the drug, and taking the patches buccally and rectally. Reports also appeared of illegal production, though these cases were sporadic and regional. One of the first waves of illicit fentanyl deaths in the U.S. occurred from 2005 to 2007. During that time, fentanyl was produced by a lab in Mexico and primarily sold as heroin. The DEA reported another significant rise in fentanyl deaths beginning in 2013, with both fentanyl and derivatives like acetylfentanyl contributing to deaths. It is now a major opioid in the illegal market, with much of the supply coming from illicit production rather than diversion. Some people are using fentanyl as their drug of choice, though that doesn't cover the majority of use. The current situation involves fentanyl, its analogs, and its precursors coming primarily from China and Mexico. The drugs may be shipped directly from China or arrive in North America through Mexico. Cartels are involved in both trafficking and the production of fentanyl opioids. Those drugs have been passed off as heroin, opioid pills like hydrocodone, and even non-opioids like alprazolam. Fentanyl is Schedule II in the U.S. It is also controlled in Canada, Italy, the U.K., and Australia. When an accurate common dose is used, fentanyl is not notably dangerous. In fact, death is not a concern until relatively high doses are used. The problem is that fentanyl is used without people knowing they've taken it and without proper dosing. In addition to those situations, it can also be a problem if someone is prescribed fentanyl without already being opioid tolerant. Respiratory depression is a real concern with significant overdoses, which can also result in hypotension, vomiting, and increased or decreased heart rate. Rate. An exact lethal dose isn't known, though using more than a strong amount in a single dose may be an issue. Even though lethal respiratory depression may not take place, severe sedation and loss of consciousness can, which come with their own safety issues. Deaths have been reported with high transdermal application, oral use, inhalation, and injection. Seizures can be provoked with high single doses, though the amount required is above what someone would use recreationally. Serotonin syndrome is another concern but it's primarily something to be aware of if you're being given a large amount in medical settings and are using a medication like an SSRI. Tolerance and typical opioid withdrawal will occur with consistent use. The withdrawal can be very uncomfortable. In the case of an overdose, naloxone is useful, but it is not a substitute for medical attention, nor is a single dose expected to last long enough to prevent respiratory arrest. Multiple doses could be required, and it should always be administered to buy the user some time while medical attention is on the way. Some of the risky combinations include other depressants like alcohol and benzodiazepines. If you have any questions about fentanyl, feel free to leave them in the comment section. In order for the drug classroom to provide more education, support is necessary, and the best way to support is through Patreon at patreon.com slash the drug classroom. You can also contribute through YouTube, PayPal, or Bitcoin. You can connect with me on Twitter at Seth A. Fitzgerald and via email at seth at the drug classroom.com. More information and links to references can be found on the TDC website using the link below.